chapter 13, text number six. Um, will you be able to bring that up on the screen? Uh, yes, Ramji. Yeah, please bear with me because I'm just doing first time. Yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. oh. That's oh, fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what we'll do is um, we'll just say with well, my respects to the Lord. Then we'll read from the seventh canto, chapter 13, text number six, and we'll say Mangalacharyan. And then we can have some discussion on um, the philosophy as given by his divine grace, Shiva Prabhupada, in this section. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay, so I'll read the Sanskrit. Nabinan de druvam rityum, adruvam vasya jivitam, kalam param pratikshita, bhutanam prabhavapyayam. Okay, word for word. So, na, not, abinandet, one should praise, druvam, sure, mrityum, death, adruvam, not sure, va, I think it's va or ya, va. Is that ya? Ya, either. Asya, of this body, jivitam, the duration of life, kalam, eternal time, param, supreme pratikshita, one must observe, bhutanam, of the living entities, prabhava, manifestation, apyayam, disappearance. Translation and purple by Sivan Grace, Shula AC, Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shula Prabhupada, Shula Prabhupada, Ki Chai. Since the material body is sure to be vanquished and the duration of one's life is not fixed, neither death nor life is to be praised. Rather, one should observe the eternal time factor in which a living entity manifests himself and disappears. Purple. So I shall say one thing. This verse is being spoken by Narada Muni. Okay, so he speaks the first few verses of this particular um, chapter of the seventh canto. Purple. The living entities in the material world, not only at the present, but also in the past, have been involved in trying to solve the problem of birth and death. Some stress death and point to the illusory existence of everything material, whereas others stress life, trying to preserve it perpetually and enjoy it to the best of uh, of their ability. Both of them are fools and rascals. It is advised that one observe the eternal time factor, which is the cause of the material body's appearance and disappearance, and that one observe the living entity's entanglement in this time factor. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur therefore sings in his Gitavali. Anandi Paramakvale, Pati Bhava Nava, Pati Bhava Nava Jale, Taribare Nadeki Upaya. Hmm. One should observe the activities of eternal time, which is the cause of birth and death. Before the creation of the present millennium, the living entities were under the influence of the time factor. And within the time factor, the material world comes into existence and is again annihilated. Budva, budva praliyate. Being under the control of the time factor, the living entities appear and die, life after life. This time factor is the impersonal representation of the supreme personality of Godhead, who gives the living entities conditioned by material nature a chance to emerge from this nature by surrendering to him. Okay, very important and instructive verse in purple. So what we'll do, we'll just say prayers and then we'll go from there to discuss some of the key points in this particular place in the Bhagavatam. Okay, so I'll say Mangalacharyan and then we'll go from there. Omegiana to Mirandasia, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshu Militamina, 
Tasmai Shri Guru Vaina Maha. Shri Chaitanya Manovishtam Stapatam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadanti Kambandiam Shri Guru Shri Utaba Dakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavamscha. Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sagana Ragnatam Vatam Tomsi Jeevan. Sadvaitam Savadutam Virjana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva. Shri Radha Krishna Vadam Sahagana Lalita. Shri Vishakam Vitamscha. Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chikatvate. Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate. Tapta Kanchana Gorangi. Radha Vrindavanishri. Rishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vantika Patrubhyas Cha. Kripa Sindhu Vyeva Cha Patit Nam Bhava Nebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Yananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasudhi. Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, I chose this verse for a specific reason. I chose it because it gives us some very powerful instruction that we can apply very easily. Um, Narada Muni is saying in this particular verse, one should observe the eternal time factor in which a living entity manifests himself and then disappears. That means that we appear in the material world at a particular point in time, right? So this incarnation. So we have a certain material body in this world at this time. And it also means that we're going to disappear from the material world again at a particular point in time. So we come, we stay, we go. Okay. So... <laughs> There's a lot that we should understand about this. I want to introduce you. I want to introduce you to your death. Okay. I want to introduce you to your own death. In this material world, there are so many situations that we are in, but because the living entity due to contact with the material energy, because we have some immaturity, ultimately, then just like a child who, who wants to run away from and ignore something that's important, right? Just like a child does that, in the same way we do this in relation to some of the fundamental features of reality. And one of the fundamental features of reality is the fact that we are all going to leave. Okay. We're all going to leave and none of us, none of us understand when we will be forced to leave this material world. And to be honest with you, <laughs> strange as it may sound, the fact that we have to leave the material world at some point, that's not the really bad situation. Just think of how many people are in this world right now, and they have had some accident, some traumatic experience, and they want to leave, but they can't leave, right? They're forced to stay here. Someone who's, let's say, had some serious accident, and they're in the hospital, and they're going to be told that they'll be paralyzed for the rest of this lifetime. So there are many, many circumstances that can happen, unlimited different um, possibilities and combinations. But all of us will leave the material world. All of us are going to have to vacate the hotel of the material world and the hotel of the material body. Now. When we, 
when we define what it means to be mature. Maturity has a lot to do with being able to face the reality of a life, of our lives. Right? Someone who's always in denial, you know that that's ignorance. Someone who's in denial, you know that the things that they, that they are scared to recognize will also be the exact same things that will cause their own suffering. Yeah. I was speaking to a devotee friend of mine and I was advising him that if you ever, you know, if you're able to find a way, it's good to reflect on your life and try to understand what are the lessons that I'm meant to learn in this lifetime. And my point to him is, you don't want to run away from these points. In fact, the greatest opportunity that each and every one of us have is to be that mature person who confronts the lessons that we need to learn in order to accelerate our devotion and return to Krishna in the spiritual world. Right? It's such a powerful thing. And what I was telling this friend of mine is that you can see a lot just by looking at your own life. What, what are the recurring patterns? And what does that tell you, right? What are the recurring patterns? What is the lesson that's meant to be learned by those recurring patterns? What are the recurring patterns that happen outside of us? But what are also the recurring patterns inside us? Someone has a recurring pattern of being sentimental. So they know that there's something that they shouldn't do, but they're sentimental and their friends are doing it and you know, just wanted to belong or they just wanted, they didn't want to, they didn't want to disturb anyone or they just wanted to be liked and, and accepted. So they just went along with whatever their friend was doing. And because their friends happened to be materialistic, they ended up you know, doing something that was against their own understanding of what they should be doing as a devotee. Someone else, they find that they just get angry very easily. They have a temper, something happened, and they just completely blow up. Huh? So we all have patterns inside, outside. And the maturity is the ability to face the features of reality. The features of reality about the outside world and our inner world. And to, to courageously pursue the lesson. Right? And this is what the verse is talking about. One should observe the eternal time factor in which a living entity manifests himself and disappears. So we can use time in a very powerful way. We can use time in a very, very powerful way. Time is the greatest energizer that humankind has. And, and what is time? Kalosmi. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, time I am. Huh? So it's very, very interesting. Krishna is present in each and every one of our lives in the form of valuable time. Why do I say valuable? Because when we use the time in the correct way, we gain infinity. Isn't that interesting? You can use something that's finite to achieve something that's infinite. And that process of using the external time to achieve infinity, that process is called Krishna consciousness. So let's look at some of the points that are made in this particular purple from Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada says the, the living entities in the material world, not only at the present, but also in the past, have been involved in trying to solve the problems of birth and death. And that's really true. That's really true. That's actually that's advanced. Nowadays, most people aren't even bothered to try to solve those problems. They assume that those things are inevitable and must happen to them. But that's where our philosophy changes to the um, from the material ideal. 
we know that birth and death don't have to be suffered. We know that we can actually remove the experience of birth and death, this, this cycle, samsara. We can remove ourselves, as is explained by Prabhupada in this particular purple. We can remove ourselves from this. He says in the last sentence, this time factor is the impersonal representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who gives the living entities conditioned by material nature a chance to emerge from this nature by surrendering to him. Isn't that amazing? People are scared of death. <laughs> but you know what? If they were even more intelligent, they'd be scared of life. Well, I, what do I mean by that? I mean birth. Existence itself is not a problem because we eternally exist. We are the soul. But the experience of being born is traumatic. The experience of death is, is something that everyone is scared of. Everyone fears. Between these two situations, we can become free of the fear of death and free of death itself by recognizing and becoming self-realized. How do we do this? There's so much in information given here. People are trying to solve the problem of birth and death. Okay. Everything we're trying to do is to solve the problem of birth and death, especially death. I, so I want to have a, 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 a life insurance to solve the issue of death. I want to protect myself to serve the issue of death and to protect myself from the issue of death. I want to have money to protect myself from the issue of death. So recently, <laughs> it's very interesting, there was a supermodel and she had undergone some surgery. And the purpose of undergoing the surgery was to try to keep her body as youthful as possible. And the surgery had gone wrong. And so for the last however many years, she's been in hiding. So she went from being a supermodel to someone who's hiding from the public. Because she said that, and she put something out recently saying that the, the procedure went horribly wrong. It was a procedure to, to freeze the fat. Actually, it was to remove the fat from her body. That's what it was. And the, 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 um, the process had gone horribly wrong. It had left her disfigured. She'd gone into depression. And now she's suing the plastic surgeons. What was she trying to do? She was trying to avoid death, right? So by making the body as youthful as possible, Subconsciously, I want to stay as far away as possible from death. What does it mean to stay away from death? It means to, to maintain and hold on to my youth. So she was trying to avoid the experience of death, but no one can avoid it in this sense, externally. It can only be overcome or transcended spiritually. So. In this particular verse in purple, which is very instructive, we have clues as to how to do this, right? What does Prabhupada say? It is advised that one observe the eternal time factor, which is the cause of the material body's appearance and disappearance, and that one observe the living entity's entanglement in this time factor. You can use time. Every day, we can set an intention. Every day we can have a meditation. How can I use the gift that's been given to me by Krishna so that I'm able to move beyond this limitation of time and become eternal? How can I use my time wisely? And what does that mean? It means to use the time to become Krishna conscious. Every time you chant, serve, read, hear, especially when it's done sincerely for the pleasure of the guru, for the pleasure of the devotees, you're, you're removing or you're moving out of the arena of death. 
the Bhagavatam makes this point, uh, no, the Mahabharata makes this point. Right? Yamaraj asks Yudhisthira, what is the most wonderful thing in the world? And Yudhisthira replies, every day we see others start passing away, dying. But each person acts like they will live forever. We need to have a sense of urgency that we don't know when our time will be up. We need to have a sense of urgency which will allow us or empower us to use our time as effectively as possible. So let me just pause and ask you a question. Let me pause and ask you a question. And I'm going to ask you to write this down. If you knew that today was your last day, okay, if you knew that at midnight tonight, you were going to leave your body. How would you feel? And how would you spend the rest of the day? Take a moment and just write down any thoughts. I'm going to give you literally one minute. Okay, so you've written some things down. What we have to understand is <laughs> that that you've written down, the meditation you just had is a reality. One day will be our last day on planet Earth. And we will, if we have used our time wisely, we will simply step into the spiritual existence. You should be very clear about this. There are many devotees who have achieved success in Krishna consciousness. What we read about in the books, what we hear about in the classes are real experiences. Great devotees have returned to the spiritual world successfully and they exist in the spiritual world successfully and they sometimes look down upon the living entities here and they try to do what they can from the spiritual world to help everyone to come back it's an incredible it's an incredible mission to save people from birth death disease and old age from rotting in the material world and there are many success stories in this regard. So we want to be that success story. If you take nothing else away from the class, what I invite you to do is to use this class to develop a meditation, a meditation on the value of each and every single second, minute, hour, day, week, month, year, the value of your own existence in this material world. Let us, let us start to think about how valuable our time is so that we do not waste even one second but we utilize every second of every day in a way that is spiritually progressive. Now, I'm, I'm gonna add, that doesn't mean that we run around fearful or negative, not at all. 
that's, that's, that time that we have has to be used in a wise way. But we can use time wisely by having very clear spiritual goals, by making sure that we spend our time whenever we have opportunity with higher association, by making sure that we do the fundamentals, the reading, the hearing, the chanting, that we do those with quality, and by removing, removing things from our lives which are wasting time, right? Because when we waste time, we waste the opportunity for transcendence. So I want to encourage you to think about this point, that we have, we have a companion. Krishna is our eternal companion. And while we are on this earth, he is also accompanying us in the form of time. And whenever we use time for his pleasure, then we're turning to him and we're recognizing him in the form of time. And we're using the time to build our relationship with him again. Because one day, one day on planet earth will be our last day. Okay, think about this carefully. One of the things that I've been trying to do for the past year or so is to create a schedule. So I'll create a schedule in the morning about what I'm gonna do in the day. And then what I've started doing also, apart from creating a schedule, is I'll, I'll create a list of tasks. So then I'll try to do those tasks and I'll try to focus what's the most important, give more focus to that than what's second important, like that. So, to try, so by trying to have powerful, spiritual priorities each and every day we're able to move our situation forward so time is precious krishna's devotees are incredibly precious they are dear to krishna let us empower ourselves to understand the great wealth that we've been given in terms of this human form of life the great wealth that we've been given in terms of every single hour of every day. And let us not waste it. Even when you take the time to think, how can I use this time most effectively to progress in spiritual life? That is also a good investment of time. And it's how we spiritualize our time that determines who will go back to Godhead and who will be forced to take birth again in this material world. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and let's open up for any comments or questions. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for the uh, very valuable class. Uh, thank you for making us understand the value of time, uh, how it is important to understand the value of our own existence and how to utilize the time um, very preciously. Um, to progress spiritually. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, it gives us like uh, urgency to um, utilize uh, our time and uh, uh, gives us some realization that we are really wasting a lot of time. So yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Dear devotees, uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can unmute yourself or you can type in the chat box um, yeah, or you can raise your hand. Thank you. Do you have any questions or comments? Okay. There doesn't seem to be any questions or comments. Uh, you were talking about uh, schedule, Prabhuji. Can you repeat that again? Sure. So one of the things that I do every day is I create a schedule. So... I, it's an hour by hour schedule, so I know what I'm doing between this out, this time and this time, etc. And I found it to be very useful because it gives me a clear sense of how I'm going to be spending my time. And so I make sure I put important things into the schedule so the day doesn't go by without me doing something that's going to help us to become Krishna conscious, either by service or by my own spiritual you know, cultivation practices, etc. You know? So I, I, so I find it to be incredibly useful.
because it's one of the ways that we can, you know, Prabhupada said this, he said, you have to first become conscious and then become Krishna conscious. So it's one of the ways to make us more conscious. Okay, oh, I've got time. What can I do with this time to, move, to help me to move forward in service to Guru, service to Krishna, etc. So that's one of the things that I do. And then I also mention how I try and make a list of the tasks. So I know what I need to get done and I, and I can see what's most important and I can start there, which is also very, very useful. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, thank you. So because, yeah, uh, we have a lot of things to do, but uh, if you don't put a schedule, like whole day we'll be doing all those things, but uh, we'll not find any time to uh, read Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or anything else. Yeah, that uh, I, nowadays even I am understanding that value of time. Um, thank you, Prabhuji, very eye-opener class today. <laughs> thank you so much. No, thank you. It, this came, this is an inspiration from my own spiritual master. Mm -hmm talk and he was talking about how if we do not plan maya will plan for us even in in the western world there's a saying that the devil makes work for idle hands so what we find in many cases and we and, and maya is so strong we're not even aware of it we find that we, you know like now it's october 2021 has almost ended yeah and if you ask the average person, and I suspect many devotees will fall into this category, they'll, they won't know where all the time went. Yes. You know? So, there was, so we could say that there were extraordinary opportunities to learn, to become purified, to serve, to understand Krishna better, to pray, etc. But if you ask the majority of devotees, they won't even know where the time went. Yeah. And this is... This is this this isn't a negative class. This is if we can utilize time more effectively, can you just imagine what you can do in terms of progress in Krishna consciousness if you were conscious of the time? And to be honest, let's be very clear here, because this is a mistake I made in the past. That doesn't mean that you're running around all the time. Right? Krishna talks about the balance between work and recreation, all of these different things. Right? So even spending time hearing a class, spending time hearing a, a lecture spending time in kirtan, they can be very relaxed and at the same time very Krishna conscious. So it's not that we have to be in the mode of passion, but we want to arrange our lives so that we're able to use our time to get the, the eternal benefit from the time that we have. And that means to engage wisely in, in Krishna conscious activities, wisely in, in serving the mission of the spiritual master and Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. So I'll go to Sukhavaha and then we'll go to Sri Devi. Sukhavaha, you had, you had your hand up. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Thank you so much for a lovely class. Um, my question is actually halfway, you've already answered my question, but uh, if you can just a bit, bit more specify that how do we manage the family life, working life, and the Krishna conscious activities that help us a lot, basically. Yes, yeah, so there's a couple of things. So the first thing is we have to prepare the consciousness every day. If I want to see my family life and my work life as a Krishna conscious offering, it comes because I'm hearing about Krishna, I'm reading about Krishna, and I'm chanting. And especially that I'm doing those things early in the day. What, what happens when I do these things early in the day is it spiritualizes my consciousness. So then as I go through the day, I'm able to see everything else in a spiritual way. Right? Okay. So that's the first thing. The second <laughs> thing is when we do these things, for example, in the house, we can, we, many of us, practically all of us, I'm sure, will have deities. So we see the house mm -hmm. as belonging to the deity. So when I'm cooking, I'm cooking for, the, for my deity. I'm cooking for Krishna. Yep. When I'm looking after the children or the family members, I'm looking after Krishna's family members. Okay. And in that way, I'm, I start to practice seeing the truth. It's not, it's not something artificial. I'm actually practicing seeing that, yeah, actually they belong to Krishna. Or actually the house is Krishna's house. That boga, that belongs to Krishna. So I'm meant to offer it to him. So I see mm -hmm. things in that way. I see the truth, actually. And as I keep practicing this with purified consciousness, 
it becomes normal because everything does belong to Krishna. I was having a very interesting reflection. It was actually quite incredible that when you're attached to something material, you're guaranteed to suffer. Okay. okay. Now, at the same time, you say, oh, but you shouldn't be attached. It's easier said than done. So mm -hmm. how does it work? One of the ways to become detached is so interesting. There's two things immediately come to mind. If people study the scripture regularly, they become detached. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. It's actually a technique. Anyone who thinks, oh, I'm too attached and, and, and I, I struggle. If you just study Bhagavatam regularly, it will automatically, I repeat, it will automatically make you detach. Not in a bad way, not, not in a cold or ruthless way, in a very in a very spiritual, positive way. Because you'll still see everything belongs to Krishna. So you'll, you'll become even more joyful and positive. And at the same time, you will, not, you will no longer be a slave to anything in the material world. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. The second thing that bring, brings up detachment is when you engage everything in Krishna's service. By engaging things in Krishna's service, one becomes detached from those things, you see? So it's so powerful that we work on these things now. Because mm -hmm. if you work on these things now, then what happens is you become so powerful. Why are you powerful? You're powerful because no matter what happens in your life, you can handle it because you're no longer attached to anything material. Okay. Again, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we can transform our consciousness in the present. Right? I, I, I encourage all the devotees, especially create good habits. When we create good habits, they automatically take us to the transcendental platform. Good habits of chanting, good habits of sleeping early and rising early, good habits of studying Prabhupada's books, good habits of attending class and, and inquiring, right? Good habits of praying to the deity, good habits of serving the deity, good habits of regular kirtan. It's your habits that can accelerate you back home, back to Godhead and protect us from Maya. Huh? There's a saying that if, that if we do not, um, if we fail to plan, then we plan to fail. So these are some of the things that we can do. And again, what my spiritual master said, if we don't, if we don't plan, then Maya will plan for us. I've seen in my own life, if I don't plan, what does Maya do? Yes, let's distract Buddha Bhavana. We'll distract him here, distract him there, distract him here, distract him there. Before you know it, the day's gone. Before you know it, the week's gone. Before you know it, the month is gone. Before you know it, the year is gone. Before you know it, the decade is gone. Before you know it, life is gone. True. So let us not waste the precious gift that we have in the human form of life and the time. I really want to encourage you in this practically. When I was thinking about what to say, it came to me, make it very practical, right? Remember this line, if we do not plan for Krishna, the Maya will plan for us. Perfect, yeah. Very good, very good suggestion, Prabhupada. Only problem is like you know, I I'm talking about myself that I am attached to my kids more, but mm -hmm. I uh, how do I come up that stage? That's okay. It's very difficult. First of all, it's natural for parents to have attachments to their children. It's natural, so it's not a question of trying to artificially become detached from the children. I read in one of my spiritual master's books. He said, in any relationship, you should consider that there's three people. There's you, there's the other person, and there's Krishna. So one thing that I've practiced, and it's made the difference, is I practice seeing Krishna in the heart of the person I'm attached to. Right? So whenever I go to, whether it's a per you know, any person, I remember this person is a gift from Krishna. It's a gift from Krishna. Krishna is in their heart. So it's my job, my duty, my service, my pleasure to deal with them in the way that Krishna would be pleased. You see? So you don't have to negate the love and affection. Don't do that. But rather, add the re remembrance that Krishna's in their heart 
and they are Krishna's beloved. So you deal with them, but now you deal with them remembering Krishna is in their heart and they're Krishna's child. They, might, they may be my son and daughter as well, but they're Krishna's child. So I want to deal with them in the way that Krishna would like me to deal with them. And so just by adding that realization, bit by bit over time, you'll see that you're able to have an even better relationship with them. No, it doesn't make it worse. It, it, may, mm -hmm. it means there'll be even greater experience in relation to, that, to those children. And because you're seeing Krishna in relation to them, they'll be given tremendous blessings, which will allow them to really be the best that they can as great servants of Krishna. And then because of what you've given to them, this is what Krishna does. If you do that for them, as they flourish in their Krishna consciousness, they'll respond by also blessing you. And so you can be saved by your own Krishna consciousness, but you can also be saved by the Krishna consciousness of those who are karmically related to you. So what Krishna wants us to do is amplify or multiply our chances of spiritual success by making sure that we deal with our friends and family in the way that Krishna will be pleased, because then that will increase the chances of them also being able to deliver us back to Krishna. Does that answer your question? Perfectly, Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. That, that point that I mentioned about seeing Krishna in, in the heart of the other person and seeing that um, that, put, that, that child, that son, daughter is, is, part of, is, is Krishna's gift. That's from Spiritual Warrior 2 by Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj. He writes about this in that book. Okay. Okay, um, thank you. Um, thank you, Prabhupada. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Let's look. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your question. I'm, I'm learning by sharing this. So thank you for helping me to actually understand more the importance of this. I'm going to go to Sri Devi. Shri Devi, are you there? Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance. Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to our beloved Guru Dev, His Holiness Bhakti Maharaj and His Holiness Chandramoli Maharaj. Yes, His Holiness Chandramoli Maharaj. Jai. Jai. Thank you. I was just thinking that this might be helpful also to Sukhavaha 13.8 of Bhagavad Gita. Yes. I'd like to read this. Just uh, Srila Prabhupada says, they are natural objects of affection. So we don't have to feel guilty about feeling love because we are meant to feel love. <laughs> That's the nature of the soul. Um, Prabhu, you give such a emphasis on time. You know, like time is running out. Time just goes one way and time is just going, you know. So I was hoping to maybe get some clarification because you do this for a living. This is just what, what is your profession. Um, you know, I, I was invited for a bridge preaching program and I accepted because I love to uh, you know, do outreach and things like that. I'm just giving you a little background. Mm -hmm. and, and I did not quite understand what was involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty much in the mindset of when devotees come together, there may be some newcomers but there's going to be kirtan, there's going to be a lecture, there's going to be discussion, and then prasadam. Mm -hmm. This was a very different kind of a preaching program. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, yeah, preaching program, bridge preaching program. At first I learned there's no kirtan, there's no discussion about Krishna, there's sharing. Everybody shares about what's going on with their life and where they are in their spiritual journey. And everybody's on a different path, not necessarily Krishna. God. I mean, it was like three, four hours. And I had insisted that we must have Kirtan because otherwise I'm not coming. <laughs> I managed to, um, at least I insisted that there should be Kirtan. So I got about five to seven minutes of Kirtan. Hardly any talk on Krishna and all the sharing business going on. And to me, after coming out of it, this was my first experience ever. Three hours or four hours, and we must have spent 20 minutes talking about Krishna or singing the holy names of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So it's a colossal waste of time for me. You know, and that could have listened to three lectures of Guru Maharaj. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, 
In all innocence, when we accept an invitation like this, we are doing outreach, we are going to meet newcomers, and we are going to do something nice for them. In hindsight, I have learned something, but how can we know beforehand that this is going to be a horrible waste of time for me? Yeah, it's a very good question. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Over the years, I've become more and more careful and selective and conscious about where I spend my time. And so what, what, I, what I found really helps. Someone, someone messaged me recently and they wanted me to do something and they didn't give me any details. So the first thing I said, okay, give me all the details. What exactly is going, what exactly are you looking for? Give me all the details. And then I can evaluate whether I'm gonna get involved or not. So what I, what I always advise is to first ask the question. It's not someone else's, it, it's the power lies with us. So the first thing we can do when we're invited to something, okay, tell me about the program. So who's the audience? What's the background? What are you trying to achieve? What, what, what's going to happen at this program? The moment you have the information, then you can make some evaluation. Because sometimes it may be a program which eventually will take people in a certain direction. They may take a long time. And it may or may not work, but it's actually, the question is, is it what you're meant to be doing? Mm -hmm. Right? Is it what you're meant to be doing? Because you know what's interesting? And I want to stress this. Actually, our time belongs to our guru. You know, honestly, actually, our time belongs to our guru. It belongs to Srila Prabhupada. It belongs to Srimati Radharani and Krishna. Mm. That's who our time, it belongs to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what we should be really asking ourselves is, are they happy about how I'm using their time? You know, it's a very powerful thing because mm. if we think that things belong to us, we do with them as we want. But if we understand that it be we, they belong to Krishna, mm. the guru, someone who, who we love, respect, admire, and want to please, it changes our way of looking at things. And, and you know, it's interesting, as I'm speaking to you, I'm getting more remembrance. But yes, that's the way to see it. My, my spirit, so recently, what we did, we, we, we got some new book covers. So we're going to read, we've relaunched the leadership book one and two of Bhakti Tirtamaj. We've created new book covers and we've got them on Amazon so people can buy them around the world. And in the leadership one book, he took, there's a whole chapter on time, on mm -hmm. how to manage time. And mm -hmm. one of the things that Bhakti Tirtamaj says is, you, and, and Prabhupada was expert like this, you see that the time belongs to, to Krishna, to God. We can say guru. And if, mm -hmm. you, and, and if we have that mentality, what you can do at the beginning of the day, write down, you know, Guru Maharaj's time. This, this day belongs to Guru Maharaj. Then right. you create a schedule and then you think, okay, is he, is he going to be happy about how I'm, you know, so then you, you, you create your schedule based upon the fact that it's your guru's time. Right. You know? yeah. right. yeah. And that can keep us very, very conscious. We can't waste it. You know, there's more, to be really honest with you, it's not just that the time belongs to the guru. Everything belongs to Everything the guru. Everything belongs to the guru. Our energy belongs to Guru Maharaj, right? Absolutely. Is Guru Maharaj happy about how I'm using his energy? Mm. Is he happy about how I'm using his time? Is he mm. happy about how I'm using his money, his resources, yeah. his network, mm -hmm. contacts? And, yeah. and again, not to be negative, we can use this positively. If I use this, in the way that Guru Maharaj is pleased, the blessings will be unlimited. Mm -hmm. If we use the things that, that Krishna allows us to contact in the way that the Guru will be pleased, you'll find that you just automatically think of your Guru because every day you think this is Guru Maharaj's time. Right. You'll start thinking about the Guru automatically. You'll start thinking about Prabhupada automatically. You'll start thinking about Krishna automatically. And then, then what happens at the time of death? Antikale Samameva. Smaran Mutba Kalevram Yaprati Samad Bhava Yati Nasjasya Sam Sayaha. Because we've been thinking about this every day, Guru Maharaj's time, Guru Maharaj's resources, Guru Maharaj's energy, then at the time of death, you will automatically remember what you've been remembering the most every day, which is Guru Prabhupada Krishna. And therefore, you will just be able to step back into Goloka Vrindavan. Jai. Beautiful.
you know, I'm going to write all this stuff. It's really great stuff. Thank you, Bhuta Bhavana Prabhu. I really appreciate this. No, thank you for your question. <laughs> thank you, question. you. Thank you so much. My humble obeisances. I, I'll prostrate the obeisances to you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pranjit, for the very nice points. Uh, we have a, a question in the chat box by mm -hmm. uh, Vrishyab Das Prabhuji. Hare mm -hmm. Krishna, dear Budhava and Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Gurudev, and Uthu. What is the best uh, clear sign we are advancing in Krishna consciousness? Yeah, there are many, many ways of looking at this. I'll give you two. One, is that we're developing the service mentality. That means that the mood of wanting to serve rather than control and enjoy. That's one answer. The second is we have more and more taste for hearing and chanting about Krishna. So I hope that answers your question, Vrishabha Prabhu. Prabhuji, is that okay? Okay, I think he said yes. Okay, good. Okay. I think uh, I'll just go over the chat box to see any questions. Uh, Mataji just, Swa Mataji just commented. Thank you very much for the very good class. Uh, I think by Philip uh, Ramlal Prabhuji, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, that is pronounced. Please accept my obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. I am driving at the moment. Wow, your class is very pertinent at the moment. Sorry. That's correct. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My takeaway is Krishna conscious is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, I have a question. And if it's okay, can I ask? Yes, and then I'll go to then. So I'll take your question, Shuddha, and I'll go to Namita because I saw she had a question as well. So Shuddha, oh. please, then we'll go to Namita. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So Shuddha, what's your question? Uh, so my question, Prabhuji, just uh, my realization is like, you know, utilization of time factor, right? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, see, most of the time we get a lot of base thoughts in the mind. That also, like we see, like we uh, kill the time. We don't utilize it properly. Mm -hmm. So if we reflect on our own consciousness and try to improve and more and more we progress in Krishna conscious way, automatically the utilization of the time will also be done in a yes. right way. Right? Is that yes. my understanding? Yes, it works in both directions. If we become more Krishna conscious, we'll use time more wisely. And if we try to use more time more wisely to, in the service of Guru and Krishna, knowing it belongs to them, then we'll become more Krishna conscious. So oh. either way it works. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So just my uh, question is like, just how to like uh, really come out of this waste thoughts and most of the time like, uh, you know, waste the um, haunt us. So just if you have any suggestions, uh, I feel like, you know, that's also really killing my time. So. Yeah, so the, the solution is, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, param drispa nivartate, that we're able to give up something of a lower nature by replacing it something of a higher nature. If I just say, I don't want to waste time, I don't, wanna, I don't have these wasteful thoughts, that's not going to do it. But what I want to do is find something that's more engaging for my thinking, right? So usually, if I find some service that I find very engaging, or a class I find very engaging, or a kirtan I find very engaging, something that I find positively engaging in okay. Krishna consciousness. That's the solution, right? So I, so we, we become free of the negative by finding something that we find positively engaging in Krishna's service. And it could even be, so for example, I know some devotees and they'll, they, what they've done is they've reached out to friends and said, why don't we read every evening? Just mm -hmm. even just for 10 minutes, right? So they find that in, they do something positive that they both find inspiring. Mm -hmm. That's also Krishna conscious. And, if, and the amazing thing about Krishna consciousness is the process itself transforms us. Okay. So when we do something that's more positive and engaging in Krishna consciousness, it purifies the heart. Cheto Dapana Marjanam. 
And because the heart is purified, we get even more joy and more relish from engaging in Krishna consciousness. Okay, Prabhupada. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So, so the one thing I'll say before I go to Namita is mm -hmm. it's individual to each person. So what you need to do is find, think to yourself, when do I find myself much more positively engaged in Krishna consciousness? Okay. Right? What are the things that engage me positively? For, I'll give an example. For myself, if I have to give class, I feel I find it much more, I find it very positively engaging. So mm -hmm. I'll read the verse, I'll think, what are the key points Prabhupada is making? How do I explain this? What else have I heard and read? How can we apply this practically? And then, so it helps me to really positively engage my energies in Krishna's service. Does that make sense? Yes, and for yes. someone else, it may be that they feel positively engaged by cooking boga for Krishna and then offering it to make it prashadam. For someone else, they may find they feel positively engaged if they're engaged in some kind of, you know, service at the temple, you know, serving the devotees or visiting the temple or going to, you know, a kirtan event, whatever it is for you, mm -hmm. yes. that's what you should be focusing on doing. Yes, yes Prabhuji. So it's a very nice point, Prabhuji. So positively engage in your mind um, so that uh, that gives happiness and progress in the Krishna conscious. Absolutely. So every minute we have to just keep track of it. Like, are you positively engaged whatever you're doing? Yeah, yeah. And it could even just be that, you know, you have a really, you know, everyone has their favorite kirtan, right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain kirtan you listen to, oh, that was a wonderful kirtan. So what there's, I always like to make this practical. What you can do is you can write down where do you get most distracted materially, right? Okay. And yeah. what can I do instead? And you may not have an idea immediately. You can also speak to your friends. You know, I tend to get materially distracted in this area. What do you think I could do differently? Get ideas. You have your own ideas. Mm -hmm. You can get ideas from other devotees mm -hmm. and you can try different things. Make it something exciting. Try, oh, I tried that. It was okay. It was better than before, but I, I think there's even something better I can do to do it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, as you said, like I could see the progress, but still, like uh, you know, as you said, like I'm more and more like you know, it's a gradual process as I progress more and more. I think. Mm -hmm. But thank you for the very nice points. Yeah, sure. I'll definitely try to apply them. Thank, thank you. you. So I want to go to the meter. I can see you're outside. I believe you have a question. Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, yeah, my, you know, my humble obeisance to you frozen, Namita, you frozen? Your, your audio keeps breaking well. I, I can't, can you I can hear me now? Hear. Yeah, I can hear you now, yes. Yeah, Ravi, I put my video off, maybe that might help with the connection. Okay. So my question was very similar to as Mataji's question mm -hmm. that uh, in terms of how do you get rid of your anxieties? I know Mataji asked about how to get rid of the waste thoughts. Mm -hmm. And my question is very similar to how do we get rid of our anxieties? Because I feel that uh, if they, my anxieties come a lot in my progression, you know, in my way of my progression for towards Krishna consciousness. So what I know, and there is, as you said, there is no right, wrong answer and you've got to explore. And I think it pretty much, you know very similar to you all what you already said to mataji but yes i'd still like to hear from you that how can i best manage or get rid of it, my anxiety so i can focus more on krishna consciousness yeah so there's a there's there's three things i want to let you know especially about this topic and if you want to find out more there's an entire chapter on overcoming anxiety and it's in one of the books of Bhakti Tirtamaj, it's either Spiritual Warrior 4 or 5, which deal with the mind. Okay, but the first thing for overcoming anxiety is to live more of a sattvic lifestyle. You know, they found that when people sleep late and wake up late, they're more anxious, they're more likely to be depressed, etc. One of the reasons why many people are suffering from anxiety is because they sleep late. So what happens when you sleep before 10 p.m., then between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., according to Ayurveda, all of your experiences of the day are being digested. So all of your emotional experiences, all the things that you did, if you sleep before 10 p.m., your mind digests those experiences in the night, so you wake up more refreshed. If you sleep after 10, 
you don't get the same ability to digest all those experiences. So they start to leave, they start to weigh down the mind in the form of lower modes, depression, anxiety, etc. So the first thing is to live more in the satvagun. Sleep early, wake up early, etc. That one thing can reduce a lot of the mental challenges that society is, is facing. That's point number one. Point number two is people read and reflect on scripture, especially the Bhagavatam, every day, it will switch off certain negative patterns in the mind. I was listening to a lecture about this point recently. If you read Bhagavatam daily, and not just read, but you read and reflect on it and discuss it. So maybe write down some realizations or discuss it with a friend. If you do it regularly, it will destroy anything in the heart that can become disturbing. And the Bhagavatam says that directly, right? Um, what's that? Yes, Prabhupada. Yes. Um, um, Abhadra, Abhadrani. So, uh, anyway, there's a, there's a particular verse, I can't remember right now. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Thank you very much, Srimati. Yeah. It act and that's Bhagavad exactly. Can you the yeah. last number, please? It's 1217, I believe. I think it's in the chat. So the Bhagavatam has its own independent potency because the Bhagavatam is non different from Krishna. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah. you. See, if you, if you read the Bhagavatam every day, what it does is it will turn off any, any negative mental programs and it will, it, will, it will elevate the consciousness, you know, and that will help us to also be more grounded. So by living more a sattvic lifestyle, by regular reading of the Bhagavatam, another thing you can do is prayer. Prayer also helps to actually um, keep us more grounded. All of these things can help. Yeah. So I hope that's of some value, Namita. Prabhuji, that's amazing. You know, I already feel a lot better. I'm going to practice all of these things from today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank Hare you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. And I'll just add one other thing. And this is yes. very important for all of us. Oftentimes, we have difficulties in life due to bad association. Right? And I'm not saying that if anyone in particular, because I don't know your, your circumstance. But I would also encourage all of you, make sure whenever you have the opportunity that you find good association, especially advanced spiritual association, like your Guru Maharaj and so on. The more you spend, you spend time with advanced association the more that you raise your own consciousness if you are open and receptive in that higher association right it will give a certain level of spiritual strength enthusiasm encouragement that is why you can actually grow and that way you can move you can elevate your consciousness just by the good association and that's again why Prabhupada's books are so important because in Prabhupada's books, you get the association of Srila Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas. Even though you're not, you may not be fully aware of it, may, we may not be fully conscious of it, just by reading the books regularly and discussing and thinking about them, you're imbibing the association of Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tako, Bhakti Vinod Tako, Srila Prabhupada, they're all there in his books, Vishnath Chakravadi Tako. It's so powerful, but it has to be done regularly and sincerely. Then it builds up power. Just like if you go to, if you do some exercise today and then you don't exercise at all for two months and you eat bad food and junk food, and then you do a little bit of exercise again for five minutes, you won't see the effect because it's every now and then. It's that powerful. Okay. So thank you for that question, Namitsa. Any other questions, please? Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you for such a detailed answer. That, that was really helpful. No, thank you for such a good question. This is, we're all learning in this process. So thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay.
Thank you, Prabhuji, for uh, really wonderful points. Uh, I think we need to go back and listen to this nectar again and uh, take a notes and try to reflect on them. Thank you. No, I thank you. I I'll just add, I'll just add. So I will also request your prayers and your blessings so that we can also make advancement so that we can be better servants of Prabhupada's mission. Yep. And also, yeah, practically think, think carefully about this. What's, what is one or two things that I can do that can help me move forward in this area, that can help me to be conscious? Prabhupada, you have to become conscious before you can be Krishna conscious. So understanding my time belongs, oh, my time belongs to my guru. It's not mine. The day belongs to my spiritual master. The energy belongs to my guru. How can I use it in the way that my guru will be pleased? And if you do this, it's so exciting. Think about this. Think about, even if you spend some time, how can, I, how can I make my life more Krishna conscious? How can I get more time to read? Or how can I be better in my deity service? If you take that, even when you ask yourself that question in your mind, you're using that time for Krishna because you're contemplating how to serve him better. All of these things, these things will make us, it will change our life. Believe me, this is not a small class. The, the principle, it's not my idea, but the principle, if we understand every day, I wake up today and this day belongs to my guru. Now I'm going to plan how to use my guru's time and energy in the way that would please my guru. If you do that every day, you, you automatically, automatically become conscious of your guru. You become conscious of, of Krishna. And then because you do this every day, it becomes normal. I'm always thinking about my guru and Krishna. And then when you die, what do you think about? Because your whole life you were thinking about Guru and Krishna every day when you were thinking about your time. Then when you die, you're always, you're automatically going to think about the same personalities that you've been thinking about every day. And therefore you'll go back to where they are in the spiritual world. It's so powerful, practical and powerful. Very nice, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Um... Today, um, I thought of, um, I had some work, I couldn't join this class, I thought, but uh, I am, I'm glad now I joined this class and I heard your lecture. So to, from today onwards, I'm going to implement what you are saying um, just now. So thank you so much, Prabhuji, once again. Thank, thank you so much. I think Sukhava had another question, so I saw her hand yeah, up. Yeah, she raised, yeah. Actually, Prabhuji, I don't have a question. I just wanted to thank you so much that, you know, as Namrata Mataji said, that I, I even I feel so energetic and enthusiastic about uh, applying all these uh, tips you have given to us in the life, you know, and make changes. Yeah. So thank you so much for no, that. Hare you, Krishna. It's, it's not me. We're just repeating what we've heard from our own gurus. Chandamoli Maharaj is also my guru, you know, and he's given me tremendous you know, insight and, and guidance, it, it, he's, it, he's incredible. You're very fortunate. You, you should know you're very fortunate. Take full advantage of your spiritual master's mercy. Yeah, honestly. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you so much. You know, just bless us that uh, we should uh, develop that mood always. Yeah, thank you for all your... No. Nice. We're also trying, we're, by sharing, we're trying to also learn more and to follow more in this way. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank okay, you. so I think we'll end there. Is that okay? Thank you, Prabhuji. We look forward for your association more and more in the future. Thank you. 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 Sorry, did you want to say something, Philip? Oh, no. Um, is that... <laughs> Show you that photo. Hare Krishna. Yeah, you're open there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I just sure. took it to my cousins and just showed them this, you know, this this is just a good thing to show. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately I had the death this morning, as I said this morning here. Yeah, by, by my cousin. So, so. We're sorry thank to hear about you. No, thank you. Thank We're you. sorry to hear about the passing away of your relative. Yeah. I'm okay. very sorry to hear about that. And I know that the prayers, all the devotees, we should pray for the departed soul. 
that they can quickly return to Krishna, you know, as soon as possible. And uh, and then thank you for for your comment. It reminds us we don't we we shouldn't we should not waste time. That doesn't mean that we should be yeah. in the mode of passion and and like running around in the mode of passion. No, we should what be grounded, centered, wise, sober. But we should in that mood use time, use energy, knowing that it belongs to Krishna, to Guru. Mm -hmm. and use it in the way that they will be pleased. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna.